yes guys so this is about this is a uh, unit 4 of chapter number 4 beta exchange rate and its effect we know guys of foreign currency is any currency other than your domestic currency and exchange rate beta is basically the price of one currency beta in relation to another currency the price of one currency how many units of one currency beta are required to fetch one unit of another currency that is called as an exchange rate guys how do you quote an exchange rate asad beta there are two ways of quoting an exchange rate one is called as a direct quote the other one beta is called as an indirect quote direct quote beta is the number of units of home currency divided by one unit of foreign currency like in india beta we write 75 rupees per dollar rupee is the home currency dollar is a foreign currency so we write 75 rupees per dollar number of units of home currency divided by one unit of foreign currency that is how you write beta a direct quote in india indirect quote asad beta is number of units of foreign currency divided by one unit of home currency in india guys by mistake if you state beta that the price of uh, dollar beta in terms of rupees is 1 rupee is equal to 0.01333 dollars that would become an indirect quote in india likewise beta in us they will write 1 rupee beta is equal to 0.01333 dollars because rupee is a foreign currency for them dollar is a home currency however in us beta if they write 75 rupees per dollar it will become an indirect quote for them it will become an indirect quote so if it is home currency by foreign currency it is a direct quote if it is foreign currency by home currency it is an indirect quote okay your direct quote system is also known as the american system your indirect quote system it is also known as the european system the european system guys now every exchange rate has two components one is called as a base currency the other one beta is called as a counter currency base currency is like the commodity guys jo bhi denominator mein aata hai beta usko base currency bolenge jo bhi numerator mein aayega beta usko counter currency bolenge that is called as a price indirectly and then beta exchange rate beta can be a single rate guys called as a unified or a unique rate where you have a single rate for buying and selling normally beta there are two way quotes whoever is a foreign exchange dealer beta would undoubtedly make a profit on account of buying and selling guys so there beta you will have a dealers buying rate dealers selling rate dealers buying rate beta is the rate at which a dealer is willing to buy foreign exchange beta from you dealer selling rate beta is the rate at which a dealer is willing to sell foreign exchange to you a dealer's buying rate is always lower beta than a dealer's selling rate dealer's selling rate i also told you the concept of cross rate guys if you know the exchange rate between say dollar and hong kong dollar you know the exchange rate between rupee and us dollar using this relation you can arrive at the exchange rate between rupee and hong kong dollar that is called as a cross rate there are multiple exchange rate regimes guys exchange rate regime is basically the method beta by which a value of a foreign currency is determined the price of a foreign currency is determined guys so at the two extreme ends guys we have a fixed rate regime and a floating rate regime under a fixed rate regime as such guys the country's central bank beta or government will decide as to what is the value of one currency beta in relation to the value in relation to to some other currency or a basket of currencies beta or some other value however because of market demand and supply there can be minor fluctuations in the value of the currency so the government will have to keep interfering beta in the foreign exchange market to ensure beta that the rate close that the rate stays closer to beta to that fixed rate the rate should stay closer to that fixed rate beta so there will be a lot of intervention required beta for, uh, on the part of the government on the other side guys a floating rate system guys is where the exchange rate is determined by the market demand and supply factors guys market demand and supply factors government intervention beta will be required only to prevent undue fluctuations to prevent too much of volatility guys in the exchange rate too much of volatility rupee beta was following a fixed rate regime guys till 1992 uh, 293 guys after that beta we shifted to a floating rate regime there are a lot of countries beta in the world that still follow a fixed rate regime like i told you about uh, aed guys the imarati dirhams and then i told you about the hong kong dollars guys yes sir uh, i gave you a brief introduction beta of the rupee also guys intermediate rate rate regimes guys are between these two extreme ends beta of fixed and floating uh, this thing guys fixed and floating rate so there can be varying degrees of flexibility guys not necessary that it should be completely inflexible guys or completely flexible so there is soft peg and hard peg guys hard peg beta where the uh, rate is fixed guys and not changing soft peg beta is where they determine a rate matlab market forces will determine the rate but the government will intervene guys if it is moving in one direction if it is crossing a particular limit that is soft peg i give you example of hong kong dollar the imf classification guys as far as the exchange rate regimes are concerned beta is first category is where there is no separate legal tender uh, imagine a country beta is using someone else's currency as a legal tender beta that would become no separate legal tender or a group of countries that are using a common currency they do not have currency of their own they just using a common currency a currency board arrangement beta is where you follow a pegging system plus every single domestic currency that is issued is backed by foreign exchange reserves other conventional fixed peg arrangement beta is a normal fixed peg arrangement guys but then because it's a fixed peg market demand and supply factors beta may cause a little distortion in the value of the currency so that will be a narrow margin guys within which the central bank is happy 
if it is reaching that limit as such guys the central bank will intervene and bring it back better to the normal level pegged exchange rate beta with horizontal bands it is a fixed rate peg only guys but with wider margins more than 1% margin is allowed a crawling peg beta is a pegging system only beta where the peg rate as such beta is periodically adjusted based on certain quantitative factors beta like inflation jaise aaj bol raha hu it is 3 dollars tomorrow i tell you it is 3.5 dollars next i tell you it is 4 dollars a crawl like arrangement beta is a crawling peg only beta but with margins given okay it is a fixed peg with margins are specified a floating rate as such beta is where market market will determine as such beta as to what shall be your exchange rate system but the monetary authority beta will keep interfering guys in the exchange market to influence the rate of the foreign currency a free floating beta is where the monetary authority does not interfere guys except to curtail excessive volatility in the exchange rates otherwise they will not interfere there are advantages of both fixed rate and floating rate guys you have seen this questions coming in the examination also the advantage of a fixed rate regime beta is that there will be no currency fluctuations as such guys so there is no foreign exchange risk there are no transaction cost the amount of investments and trade will increase as such guys a uh, monetary policy pay beta there is a stability as such guys you know that it is not going to change uh, international trade beta will increase there will be no speculation generally leads to lower inflation because your price of imports will not increase so however beta central banks will need to maintain huge foreign currency balances to interfere floating rate beta on the other side beta is considered to be more efficient guys and transparent system the exchange rate can be used as a policy tool beta central bank does not have to maintain foreign exchange reserves beta to interfere to intervene in the flow foreign exchange market because anyways it is market determined guys it is not like fixed rate mein beta it is fixed and the market rates are changing so they will have to interfere so guys ha dono ke advantages and disadvantages bola tha beta mein in short guys a fixed rate regime guys will offer you monetary stability guys but then there is no policy flexibility a floating rate regime beta will offer you policy flexibility guys but again there is no monetary stability understood guys after that beta we spoke about the concept of nominal and real exchange rate i told you the exchange rate that we see in the markets beta are all nominal exchange rate Uh, but that does not determine the amount of trade activity beta between two countries it is the amount of real exchange rate now real exchange rate beta is the quantity of goods beta that you can buy or that can be exchanged for a unit of goods beta in some other country so you are basically comparing the prices of products beta in different countries to determine the real exchange rate i gave you an example of a pizza costing 2 dollars in usa 130 rupees in india so based on purchasing power parity beta it should be 65 rupees per dollar so to convert your nominal exchange rate beta into real exchange rate you are supposed to write real exchange rate beta as nominal exchange rate into domestic price beta by foreign price If there's a basket of commodities, guys, obviously you cannot use one commodity, so that will be better domestic price index divided by foreign price index. Now, guys, a lot of economists, guys, do not use the concept of only nominal exchange rate. They use the concept of nominal effective exchange rate, wherein you determine the price of domestic cu currency, guys, in relation to a uh, multiple international currencies, guys. It's like an average rate. So there, beta, using nominal effective exchange rate, beta, you can compute your real effective exchange rate. Same formula, guys, into domestic price divided by foreign price. But instead of directly using nominal exchange rate, we are using nominal effective exchange rate. Foreign exchange market के बारे में बोला बेटा after this I told you foreign exchange market is not confined to a single location it's an over the counter market spread globally as such guys the participants would be government would be central bank would be corporations individuals businesses as a government बेटा you are not interfering to make profits you are only interfering as such guys to ensure that there is no volatility or the volatility is reduced as a central bank बेटा you might interfere to either trade on your own account or trade on behalf of your clients. When you're trading on your own account, guys, it can either be for arbitrage or it can be for speculation. Arbitrage, beta, is where you think that there's a riskless profit, guys. You can buy in one market at a cheaper rate and sell in the other market at a higher rate and make riskless profit out of it. The end result of arbitrage, beta, is that the prices will stabilize. They will come back to their equilibrium level. Speculation, beta, is where you are expecting an increase and decrease on uh, a particular direction, guys, and that is why you enter into foreign exchange contracts. Understood, sir? There are two types of transactions. There are two types of transactions as such, beta, that are entered into in the foreign exchange market. One is called as a current transaction, also known as a spot market transaction. The other one, beta, is your future transaction, also known as a forward transaction. A spot market transaction, beta, is a transaction in foreign exchange that involves immediate delivery or receipt. मतलब you are immediately selling foreign dollars as such, guys, by paying uh, you receiving rupees, or you give rupees, beta, and take dollars. 
for future contract but on the other side better as a contract that you enter today better to buy or sell foreign currency on a later date guys at a predetermined rate if it is a direct contract between two parties you call it as a forward contract if it is through a stock exchange you will call it as a future if the forward rate beta is greater than the spot rate we say that the forward rate is at a premium if the forward rate beta is less than the spot rate we say that the forward rate is at a discount yes sir then as far as determination of nominal exchange rate is concerned guys i told you to determine the nominal exchange rate you just have to go by the market demand and supply factors wherever better the market demand and supply meets that would be your nominal exchange rate under a floating rate regime there is nothing better that anyone can do okay changes in exchange rates guys appreciation or depreciation when you say guys well, because of market forces guys whenever the value of currency beta is increasing in relation to another currency we say beta that it is appreciation whenever the value of a currency decreases in relation to another currency beta we say that it is depreciation we say it is depreciation if your home currency is appreciating guys it means foreign currency is depreciating if home currency beta is depreciating it means foreign currency is appreciating always remember beta home currency depreciation is beneficial to exporters bad for importers home currency depreciation is beneficial for exporters bad for importers why beneficial for exporters beta the price of indian goods beta relatively would become would decrease in the international market so obviously the demand for exports will increase or beta the exporters will now receive a higher amount of uh, rupees beta for the same amount of foreign uh, for the same amount of goods likewise guys importers will now have to pay a higher amount guys for importing goods that is why it is bad for imports remember this point this is the main important point guys when they talk about currency appreciation or depreciation impact on real economy then guys we took an example of home currency guys home currency depreciation where the demand for foreign currency increased in resulting in an increase in the price of foreign currency and resulting in a decrease in the price of home currency and then we also took an example of home currency appreciation guys where the supply of foreign currency increased resulting in a decrease in the price of foreign currency and resulting in an increase in the price of home currency understood sir and then beta we spoke about devaluation versus depreciation i told you devaluation is a deliberate attempt made by the government guys to decrease the value of their currency in relation to another currency or basket of currencies guys usually done under a fixed rate regime appreciation or depreciation on the other side beta is due to market forces of demand and supply and not due to government intervention not due to government intervention finally beta after this we spoke about the impact of exchange rate fluctuations on domestic economy guys i told you that exchange rate is a very important economic variable guys that can have an impact on a lot of variables uh, directly and indirectly impacting guys we spoke about how beta the amount of export revenues and import payments will change how the uh, demand for exports how beta it will uh, increase exports decrease imports if the home currency is depreciating if the home currency is appreciating beta your exports will decrease imports will increase also guys it will affect the amount of economic activity beta because obviously if the exports are increasing and the imports are decreasing the domestic production beta will increase it can result in an increase in inflation in the short period foreign exchange payments agar kuch hai beta if you have borrowed money in foreign currency now you have to repay you'll have to repay at a higher price government ka beta foreign payments can increase government ke foreign debt payments beta can increase and then guys aur kya the beta ha it will affect your terms of trade as such guys theek hai normal points guys i told you beta the main points that is supposed to remember guys are the other impacts of currency depreciation there will be a windfall gain for export oriented industries there will be an increase in import duties for the government there will be higher amount received beta in rupees for remittances that are received from abroad if the government is borrowing money after a currency depreciation guys they are in fact they are going to receive a higher amount in rupees and then beta there will be a positive impact on trade deficit due to currency depreciation and beta the government imports will decrease due to appreciation guys in sab ke ulte points likho ek advantage rahega beta there there will only be one advantage is that you can actually promote the domestic industries guys you can increase the domestic industries to invest in technologies guys improve the efficiency of their operations and actually reduce the cost of their product over a longer period so that beta they can still remain competitive in the global trade system with this i rest my case you're done with this unit also guys there's just one more unit left beta stay tuned i'll see you guys in the next class bye bye guys